Now what? <laughs> I'm Caitlin Benitez Strine. I'm a senior lens studio community specialist, and I help creators build awesome lens experiences. So I'm on the camera platform team and we all make uh, lens experiences and then I work with a community of creators that are outside of Snapchat. It's just crazy. We're always building something new. Every month it's fun to see what our team has built up next and I'm always excited to see when I can pass it to the community as soon as possible. I also just love how international it is. So we have people in London, in Israel, in Ukraine, obviously Los Angeles, New York City. And that's just our own team and camera platform, not just Snapchat. And seeing imaginations come to life is, is just really a magical experience. What's interesting to think about is everything that happens once the lens is done. So you've made this awesome lens experience. Now, how do you showcase that to the world? And we have a couple different ways in which lenses are distributed, but there's a, a lot that you can do to make sure that people are interested in your lens experience. Uh, one of the things I always look at first is what is the icon of the lens experience? Did they just use a template? Did they just take whatever was stock or did they actually create their own version of a icon? And then I want to know what the lens is before I actually get into it. And I learned that by looking at the icon and the preview lens experience. Uh, and that's when I find it through Snap Camera or Lens Explorer. But there's also other ways in which lenses can be found and that's through scan triggers. So people can go around and scan random objects and things around them, whether it's pets or chairs or even landmark or buildings and lens experiences can come from that. So um, I bought plants earlier in uh, the quarantine season and I was able to scan them and get a little dancing plant that I'm sure v Vernon actually animated. And it was just great to have the right lens experience without having to search specifically for it. So if you have a lens that's related to a certain theme, then you have to include scan triggers um, or even tags that will help people find the lens experiences. So definitely encourage people to use that. So I'm a little bit cat obsessed. I have a little black cat named Bug, who I've always tried to incorporate into Lens Studio as different fun effects. This is basically the lens. <laughs> I took a picture of her, used Photoshop, and, and got like the ears, the nose, and when you open your mouth, I used the Giphy integration to have a piece of bread pop out. It was very simple. And I think everyone's kind of embarrassed of their first lens experience, <laughs> but it's also great to see the evolution of how far people have come. <laughs> yeah. The most successful lens that comes to mind this year was from one of our top creators named Pam. And she used SnapML to create a style transfer lens, which made everybody look like spaghetti or noodles. And she's done a bunch of versions of this, uh, usually food related. So she's done fruity pebbles, spaghetti. So it was great to see the incorporation of machine learning to make a viral lens experience. When you make a lens experience, what's awesome about the community lens is that it can go viral. So through Lens Studio, you can submit two types of lens experiences. You have your community lenses and then your sponsored lens experiences. Sponsored lens experiences will go to a certain subdivision of people, depending on what the brand wants, who they want to target. But the community lens has the ability to go anywhere and everywhere. So if you want as many people to use it, you just have to take into consideration that you are creating it for a global audience. So what might be okay for you and your friend group might not be okay for the entire community. When you are building lenses for different cultures, you want to rely on visuals as much as possible. So we have hints that are translated into other languages, but at the same time, it sometimes the translation doesn't go one for one. And so we definitely want to encourage people to include visual tips so that people can better understand how to use the lens experience. I mean, that's just really the, even the core to Snapchat, we open to the camera and encourage people to talk visually so that their message could be spread as far and wide as possible. So I try to encourage people to include visual hints inside their lenses instead of just specific words. And it's really great to see the community really come together and it really just is this international community where people are learning from each other and I, I hope that just continues.
Hey, I'm Jai Trudinger, better known online as Chinny the Woo. Um, I'm from Adelaide, Australia, uh, and yeah, I make lenses. You've probably seen them. I like making memes and I just like making anything really. In terms of building things, uh, building lenses that people can use in their own content um, to help enhance their own content, you know, it's something that I want to keep doing. I want to keep improving on, keep building these tools to show that AR can be such a huge tool uh, to help improve and enhance people's content and it can make it so much better. Um, you know, I, I, I keep wanting to make these lenses that are just open-ended questions that are that are things that people can put their own spin on they can really uh, add their own touch to and, and and be creative with for me in terms of usage traditional lenses um they they usually sort of have only like one path uh one sort of usage you know they're sort of like a closed-ended question whereas create lenses are much more of more of an open-ended question uh, where the user can add their own spin to things, you know, uh, create lenses more like a tool, something that the user can use to tell their story, you know. For example, um, I have my donut head lens here. So this is more of a traditional lens, you know. There's only really, you know, people put it on their head. It's funny. I uh, guess it's a bit of a gag. Pretty straightforward, more or less. Uh, but if we take, you know, a create lens, something that can be used as a tool, yeah, so if we uh, take a create lens, for example, my screen scanner pro, you know, this is something that people can use as a tool to, to tell their own story. They can put their own unique spin on it. You know, it's got like unlimited use cases. And it's not to say a traditional lens is bad. You know, they're always great to be used for all sorts of things, you know, especially on Zoom calls. I love using the more traditional lenses. But when you're sending, you know, you're sending just a quick snap back to someone, you know, usually a create lens is something that people will spend more time using and yeah, really just make it their own. For me, whenever you're building a lens for, you know, a snap star, an artist or, you know, someone of a similar description, it's all about how you can fit them, their personality into the lens and, you know, make it really reflect who they are. One great example is this Pentatonix lens that I created for a tour that they were doing around Australia and New Zealand. I got sent the tour artwork, uh, so I just used the whole tour artwork and tried to translate that into a lens and this is, uh, this is what I came up with. It's just, I guess, the same colors, the same boxes, uh, and they're just transitioning between each other on a, on a raised eyebrows. It's something simple, but uh, I guess it puts an element of them into the lens, which I think is really cool. Hello, uh, my name is Don Allen Stevenson III, and online I go by Don Allen III. Uh, I was born and raised in Silicon Valley, so the Bay Area, that's like San Francisco, I mean, for my own filter that I made for spectacles, uh, I really liked having sky replacement so I could really help the end user feel like, you know, they're in the whole world. The whole world is this experience that I'm making for you. Not just these few little, you know, graphics that you see project on the screen over there on the table, but rather like look around your whole world. You know, I put all these stars up around there. I put all like the whole sky dome. And to be able to have somebody experience that through that platform is really fun. I'm Kathy Trehan. I'm a senior communication designer at IDEO in Munich, but I also dabble in 3D visual art in my personal time. And I got started in AR when I tried to see how I can stretch 3D. I realized that I don't leverage the lenses to create content for specs. Instead, I leverage spectacles to create content for the lenses because I want the lens to be at the center of the show. So I end up taking footage with the spectacles more to set the right kind of background or the right setting for the lens to shine. So is it uh, a lot of really great lighting? Is it like something that has layers so that there's the, the depth setter can come to use? So that becomes the, the main thing that I work with. As a 3D artist, I end up making a lot of abstract elements and a lot of environments and I see that being extended into the lenses that I create for AI. So I realized that I end up making so many more like world lenses and they often have an element of discovery or whimsy in them. So 
Is it an object that's a spawner and it spawns from the sky? Or is it a bunch of objects that are around you and you discover them only once you rotate? So there's always an element of, I guess, wonder. One of my favorite lenses is a spectacle lens that uh, came out quite recently. I think it was by Ada Sokol. And it was this really beautiful and simple and almost surrealist uh, cloud lens. And I just wish I'd made it because I thought it was so cool because, because it transformed a piece of footage or a place so easily into this dreamlike place. My name is Yusuf Omar. I am the co-founder of Hashtag Our Stories. I'm also a creator of First Person, which is a new Snap original told with Snapchat spectacles through the eyes of incredible innovators fighting to save the planet in amazing ways. And I'm joining you from Brisbane, Australia. Beyond the flower crowns and the doggy tongues and what's often seen as the gimmicky parts of AR, there is incredibly powerful tools here tools to enable communities and people around the world to share their stories. With our new Snap Original, we have one augmented reality lens for every single episode. And what I'm really excited about is what we call climatic lenses. There's so many climate change issues that are impacting all of us, but are incredibly difficult to see or to visualize. For example, CO2 emissions. We know they exist, but it's often hard to see. So we're able to create an augmented reality lens that has clouds of CO2 in the sky so people can talk about global warming in a constructive way. So using a climatic lens on a selfie camera, I'm able to create this really smoking kind of environment and I can see a little CO2 cloud coming out of the sky. And if I flip the CO2 lens over to the world camera, we're able to see CO2 emissions. Like look up there. There's CO2. So I think that's really exciting to be able to show things that don't actually exist in our world. We're able to create an augmented reality lens that breaks the ground open so you can visualize what a drought might look like in your community. And it just takes all the ground and creates that kind of cracked surfaces. Because water is one of those things that we take for granted and you don't often appreciate just how bad things can get in your city when you run out of water. So according to the UN, there'll be more plastic than fish in the ocean by 2050. And we wanted to help our audience see that. So I'm able to open up a lens and have all that plastic waste behind me with those turtles. And this is a powerful experience that people can use to share with their friends to say, hey guys, there's a problem. There's too much plastic in our ocean. We need to do something about it. One of the episodes of First Person is about a robot that helps the coral reef make more babies. And in this instance, we can actually make this robot navigate the coral reef in interesting ways. So you got your robot, you can bring him up, down, and I'm just gonna take the robot for a little spin as it makes its way around the coral reef. Again, the coral reef is dying, it's way below the ocean. It's often impacted by global warming that people are causing thousands of kilometers away. And we just wanted to create a experience where people can come face to face with the issues that are impacting us. And one of the episodes that we've done is actually looking at pollinators like bees that are responsible for like a third of all the food on the earth. You need pollinators. And we found an organization that is putting beehives in the middle of urban spaces, in the middle of cities. And this is a really interesting idea. They actually put the beehives on rooftops. So I'm just gonna scan this lens. And in this instance, you are effectively controlling a bee uh, using your face. Um, so I'm gonna open it up right here. And it says, raise your eyebrows to fly and try and catch the flowers, avoid the pesticides. So I'm missioning around. Oh no, pesticide, avoid, avoid, avoid. Flower, flower. Okay, I got the flower. Another flower. Woo! Avoid, 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 avoid. How do you make people care about, you know, the pollination of plants and in turn their food? I think games is a really exciting way to do that. And somebody might encounter the game because their friends share it. And then they suddenly discover a really important story about how we can ensure food security for the future. Uh, there's an interesting intersection between the gamification of, of journalism and, and serious stories. And I, I'm really enjoying playing in that space. Hi there, I'm Cyrene Q. I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas, and I'm an artist. Lens Studio released Camera Kit recently, which allows other apps to integrate the Snap Camera within their apps. 
And that's why I had to be mindful about the different formats because other apps uses the Snap Camera differently. For example, I work with a Snap Camera Kit launch partner called Squad, and they use a circular format within their app. And I had to make lenses that work in that circular format while keeping in mind to make the lens good outside that app. Hi, my name is Esther, and I'm the CEO of Squad. Squad's the best place for hanging out with your friends in voice and video chat rooms and doing things together like co-watching videos and movies. We were really lucky to be able to be one of the launch partners for Camera Kit. We got to watch as they built the product and kind of just like help along the way. And one of the things that really stood out to us is A, the commitment from the team at Snap to bring lenses out into these third-party apps like ours. There's just a ton of really authentic enthusiasm around being able to you know, expand the scope and size of the lens community. And you know, Snapchat really has the very best AR technology in the world. And as a startup, you, know, you have to make choices about what you're going to invest your time in and for us, it didn't make any sense to build that AR technology ourselves. Instead, we wanted to leverage what already existed in the world. And that's why we chose Snap's camera kit. As Snap continues to build out um, profiles and all of this kind of uh, functionality, we think that it's only going to be even better to have made this investment. Hey everyone at LensFest, I'm Joe Luck and I am the senior visual effects artist here at Trilla. I'm originally from Hong Kong and I'm currently living in lockdown London, so that's fun. But we hope you're all keeping safe out there and really excited to be part of uh, LensFest this year. With the inclusion of the camera kit, we've seen some truly incredible results uh, in terms of a huge take up in creation. It really does inspire fun new content for Trilla users and provides them yet another avenue of content creation um, to keep making fresh, original content. We're using augmented reality to really enhance our content creation tools for our users on Trilla. Um, and we really want to encourage them to create truly shareable content uh, that's fun and accessible for all. Um, we're working with some of the world's leading musical artists and brands to produce interactive uh, augmented reality lenses um, so that users can really connect with those brands and their idols. At the moment, we are only leveraging lenses within the live capture flow portion of the Triller app, which allows users to really enhance their creative content from step one, the camera, um, before they bring it into our edit and shuffle systems. Uh, but Triller does have some cool plans, which I can't really say as of now. Sorry. <laughs> I've seen a lot of my lenses being used and even go viral. But what's most interesting is having one of my lenses go viral on LinkedIn. There were educators, people in the medical field, and even doctors posting about this particular lens. It was interesting seeing their conversations about that this can be the future of virtual learning or this can be used for doctors to communicate with their patients visually with the power of AR. And I thought that was really cool. Yeah, so, I mean, what it feels like is, it's like seeing your artwork live uh, beyond your imagination. Because what always ends up happening when I make a lens is people use it in ways that I did not think of. And when you see somebody using it in a new way and they're getting like, like fulfillment and enjoyment from that thing that you made and they're, they're kind of repurposing it, it feels so good. Like in my heart, it's like, whoa, I never thought about using it that way or never thought about placing it that way or framing it that way. So for me, it's very inspiring to see the community use your creation, whether they're wearing it on their face, whether they're putting it out in their world or whether they're surrounding themselves in your environment. Uh, it's, it just feels really good. My advice for aspiring creators or people that just want to create their very first lens is that Lens Studio may look complicated, but don't let that scare you. I felt the same way when I first opened the software. It can be intimidating, but know that you don't have to learn what every single button does. You just need an idea and learn what you need to know to make that idea come to life. 
Ignore the rest until you need it. And lastly, have fun. If you're going to be a creator, you're going to be creating a lot. So creating should be as fun as the final product. My advice is, it's super simple. It's just that it's not as hard as it seems. So when I think back at when I started, I remember uh, Snapchat got in touch with me, Spectacles actually got in touch with me to create lenses for Spectacles. And I was a little confused. I thought they'd made a mistake by getting in touch with me because I'm not an AR creator. I'm just someone who dabbles in 3D. But I realized that after going through the experience of making those lenses without knowing what I was doing in the beginning, I realized that the tools uh, to play with AR have become so much more democratic. And from the outside, it might seem really intimidating, but there's so many resources online to learn that the learning curve isn't as steep as you'd expect. My advice to any aspiring creator is to simply keep creating. Now, hold up. I know that sounds like a cop-out answer, but let me explain because coming from an industry background, I know all too well about the high technical bar that the industry sets for people to get in, whether it comes to high processing power uh, equipment, um, specialist software with huge price tags, the countless hours of rendering and rendering and rendering. With Triller, with Camera Kit, with Lens Studio, we're suddenly seeing this huge democratization of these high-end tools for the masses. Anyone with access to a phone or computer can create this high quality content and use other people's lenses in order to create their own high quality content. And bottom line is, is that you need to keep creating, keep supporting that system so that other creators like you can be inspired and use your filters in ways that maybe you can even imagine. There are enormous problems in the world, whether it is climate change or mental health issues, and it's gonna take all of our creativity together to tackle these unprecedented issues. And I think AR is perfectly positioned with 5G internet, with great cell phone devices, and with a community like you that are ready for change. Take care.